I'm going to have this up on my phone so I can check the chat as well. Okay. Alright. Let's see if anyone joins. Probably not because there's no notice whatsoever. That is okay. There's people in here now. Okay. <laughs> hello. Hello. Sorry, I'm checking on my on my phone to see if people are joining in. And it looks like people are. So I'm gonna go ahead and start figuring out how to do anything. So um, first things first. Uh, so this is the harp. Just came in yesterday. I'm super excited. Uh, so first things first is I'm going to turn on the amplifier or plug it into the amplifier and turn it on and see how that goes because I've never worked with an amp before. So let's see how this goes. Whole new world, electric instruments. Okay, so we got that end plugged in. It's a long cord. <laughs> it's a quarter inch. I'm just gonna plug it right in. There we go. And Turn this on. So I have a um, Roland, was a Microcube GX as my amplifier, and this is the Casista Clear Tones 30 electric harp. So I'm super excited to get started with this. Um, I'm actually gonna turn it on. So there is I'm gonna actually climb up here just to show. So at the bottom, there's this little console. Um, in the corner. So once I press the power button, which is around here somewhere, there we go. You can see that's lighting up. Um, so this is activating and this is actually like the menu where all the controls are. So it's actually start off with make sure the amp's actually turned on so that it re it's registering that. Give me a second. Okay, start playing with the amp. master volume if I do this oh <laughs> it's not gonna make any noise it's against the pillow okay let's see we have this is the mic in I believe amplifier acoustic jam combo let's see So looks like I need to figure out something with the the amplifier um, or how it's connected. So this is all completely new to me. So bear with me. Um, it's going to be a lot of back and forth. Let's see. Oh, and my hair caught in one of the levers. Oh, I think I do hear it coming in. Delay. Oh, okay, yeah, it actually is going through. Alright, so. Gain. Ah, yes, that's what it was. The gain was too low. So, gain, volume. Oh, wow, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, so at least I have this working now. Um, oh, okay, that's pickups. for me to play around with and lower settings but uh, let me know if you can hear it uh, I guess some thumbs up or messages in the chat to let me know like if the volume of the harp is actually coming through okay. I'm gonna keep looking at the chat until someone says yes we can hear it okay yes it's sounding so amazing okay great all right um so I'm actually, let's see. Oh, wow, that really comes through. Let me do that. Okay, so I'm gonna try to.
put it on with the uh, with one of the what's it called hooks straps. Um, so there's a guitar strap, but there's also this interesting kind of st uh, stethoscope looking one. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and snap this into position and put this around my shoulder. There we go. All right. So now I can easily kind of walk around with it. If I move the cord <laughs> out of the way. Okay. Yeah. So now it's hands free. It's on me. All right. So let's see. Okay. So let's go ahead and play just like a little basic scale. Okay. So there's a lot I need to learn in terms of how to make things work properly with the amplifier. So I'm gonna, uh, let's turn down. Let's do some stuff. just joining in now, I'm adjusting the settings on my amplifier. Um, I'm completely new to this world of electric instruments though, so I, I am learning as I go. Um, I'm kind of trying to equate it to when I do any sort of post-processing post when I record with the big harp, which is kind of over this wall on that side. Um, so all the stuff I do in my uh, digital audio working space, uh, Cubase Elements 10, uh, I'm familiar with the concepts of things like compression and reverb and stuff like that, but it's I guess very different when you are actually working live with an electric instrument and adjusting the knobs here. So having fun with that. Um, okay, so let's see. Where did you get an electric harp? Yes, so this is the Casista Electric Harp Clear Tones 30 model. So if you go search for Casista, so C-A-S-S-I-S-T-A, -S -S electric harps, this should come up. Um, I think it's also in the video description that I put for the stream, so feel free to look into it from there. Um, feels really great. This is actually a new model, or um, updated latest version of the Clear Tones 30. Um, so I believe I'm the first person to actually have this exact model, so yay! <laughs> I'm excited to really like put it to the test and learn it. So uh, let me play around a little bit more with the pedals, or with the, um, what's it called, with the amplifier. So we have... DC Queen, what was that? Oh! <laughs> See, game. Okay, so I think my game was too high earlier. So now if I turn on the chorus. Oh, interesting, it's a chaser. Oh, <laughs> that's neat. So I can do something like this. So, you know, while I'm at it, let me go ahead and start turning on the lights. So, this is something I haven't shown off yet, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you will be excited to see, is if I turn this on. Uh, okay, maybe it's not as impressive with, like, this backlight on. Let me turn this off, actually. There we go. <laughs> so, now we can see the harp um, in a different color. So, let me go ahead and change it to a different effect real quick. The touch screen's a little finicky, but come on. I'm gonna change the setting. There we go. All right, so hopefully that's visible. Um, yeah, so now you can see it's in the rainbow setting. So this is really pretty. <laughs> I'm a fan of this one, so let's go. Harmonics are interesting on this. Okay, I need to get used to the harmonics, but that's doable.
Ah, okay, so in terms of cost, um, so because this is a custom kind of a lower, what, what's it called? It's not like someone has like a huge factory where they're making these all the time. It's, you know, really handcrafted by Phil Casista. Um, it is a little bit more on the pricey side, but electric harps typically are already kind of um, a little pricey. Uh, so this one in particular, with the case and other accessories, I think was about three and a half K a bit more. Uh, but that's significantly less expensive than like a, a um, full size concert grand harp. So to be honest, I still don't own the major harp that I play. I still rent that because uh, it is so expensive. So I'm happy to have this one that I, I own. So there's this. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's such a neat one. Okay. Let's see. Let me turn around a little bit. How does it look like when I turn? I'm really liking the kind of default settings that are available on the amplifier itself, um, but in a few days, um, I will have access to uh, my first effects pedal. So I'm actually going with the, uh, what's it called? Uh, I forgot the make name, uh, something Quake, Earthquaker, I believe. Um, after Neath V3 uh, re reverb pedal, so it's going to sound really nice. If you're um, ever curious about um, different effects pedals and how they sound on electric harps, you should check out Emily Hopkins. So Emily Hopkins is a harpist who does like incredible pedal work and like seriously so many videos online of working with different pedals, which is helpful for me in determining you know what I might be interested in getting. So I definitely check out their channel. the chords again I forgot <laughs> so I did an E okay okay it's been a while since I did my Sailor Moon thing so I don't remember the exact chords but let's see I'm gonna check the chat Oh my god, there goes the dream uh, And it is um, a bit expensive, but hopefully with saving up over time or, you know, maybe asking for like, uh, like friends help or anything or renting, it might be an option. So let's see. So who taught you how to play or did you teach yourself? Okay, so uh, luckily I was able to get instruction for harp. So I started out um, playing piano for most of my life. Um, <laughs> And so actually, I don't know if you can see it here, but there is a keyboard behind me. Uh, so I played piano for most of my life, and I played viola for a bit. And in college, I went to school for engineering. Uh, so I actually didn't, you know, I had to stop music for a while because I needed to focus on my studies. And then luckily, my last year in college, I, um, you know, checked the music department out just to see if I had space to take piano lessons again. Um, then I saw harp. And I was like, oh my god, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take harp lessons. So that's how I started in my last year in college. So um, I started on the pedal harp. So the, the type I typically play, it's over the wall right there. Um, and with that, I luckily had great instruction. So um, I was able to grow greatly because of my great instructor during grad school. Um, and after that, it's been a lot of kind of self-teaching, more of like the arrangement and kind of music theory kind of stuff. So it's been, it's been really great. Okay. And yes, yeah, I'm an engineer. Uh, yeah, it's a fun fact. I actually traditionally come from a biomedical engineering background. Um, so I am not a professional harpist by trade, but I do enjoy the harp a whole ton. So I definitely record a lot. Studio Ghibli, I did um, 
、like, castle in the sky.、Uh, was it Kimi? Kimi o no s e t e Like a while ago.、Uh, but I don't remember exactly how I did it. I have my sheet music somewhere. I remember real quick.、Mm. I think I did this one at E, but all right, so in terms of tuning,、um, so pedal harps by default are in C flat major,、uh, but lever harps, depending on you know, personal preference or what kind of style you typically play in, They might either be tuned in C major or in E flat major. So, this one's in E flat. So, by default,、um, everything is going to be in the E flat key. But if I adjust the、um, levers up here, then it will change keys. So, let's say I want to change it to,、um, to C major. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift. All the、um, flats, so we have A, B, and E,、uh, which I'm lifting for every octave. And now this is in、uh, C major. Oh, <laughs> we're not, because I messed up. <laughs> There we go. Oh, yeah, sorry, I don't speak too often in my videos, so just uh, just decided to do the stream.、Uh, <laughs> assumed you spoke via harp.、Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, Walker. <laughs> nice to see you here.、Uh, some of my favorite songs to play. So I'm not sure quite yet on this harp because I'm so used to relying on pedals for key changes.、Um, I'll need to spend some time kind of figuring out a repertoire that works nicely with this. And. Let's see. I'm going to go in order. I see Amy. Hello, Amy. I will answer your question in just a moment. How do you manage to balance your time with school, work, and heart? Any tips? Oh, <laughs> that's a hard one. So,、um, time management is super important. Ooh. <laughs>、uh, so, time management is super important, but what I found helpful for me is、um, really planning things out. So, luckily, I'm finished with school now. I, I got my PhD in 2019, so I've been out of school since then, but work is still just as time consuming.、Um, so, I would say kind of、um, make sure you give yourself enough time to rest, but also kind of be smart about how you're spending your time. So, if you really want to pick up a skill like learning how to, in my case, like, you know, learning a little bit of jazz harp or kind of arrangement theory. Um, kind of spend time just looking at you know, educational videos and really feeling involved in interacting with that,、uh, with that material.、Um, and even if you only get to spend you know, 15 or 20 minutes here and there, it's a lot better when you're concentrated and know what you're doing or at least have a goal rather than kind of passively trying to do things. Okay. All right. So the pickups are. Good question, Amy. So, From my understanding, the, all the pickups and everything are within、uh, this section here, closer to the base of the strings. So if I look inside, it's a bit hard to see,、um, but I do believe they're inside here. And so I could be wrong. No, no I think I'm right. Okay.、Um, but it, it's pretty nice. So right now, I have it plugged into my、uh, Roland Microcube GX amplifier. Tune that,、um, but it, it's really nice.、Um, so, if I like talk into it, it's not picking up obviously. If I like tap the board, you can hear that's being picked up a little bit,、um, but it, it's really nice. If I do, well, if I do like a、um, what's it called? Okay, yeah, interesting. So, if I do、um, the lever equivalent of like a pedal slide,、um, then It doesn't seem to pick up that part that much. Like the buzz itself, I hear it more, I think, directly from the harp rather than from the pickup. A little bit. Okay, you can kind of hear it. Yeah. All right. Right, I can see now. 
not eat. <laughs> Remember that? Okay, all right. Yes, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So for uh, Amy mentioning that the website says it's a continuous pickup, so um, that makes sense that it would run along the center. So if I, actually if I take this off real quick, I'm gonna take it off real quick just to look at the center. Here we go. Okay, I think I can see it. Let me uh, take this down. So I see what the lights are, and the LEDs are placed there, and yes, yeah, I see one continuous strip down the center. Yes. All right, thanks for looking into that, Amy. Sorry, I didn't really give an <laughs> educated answer. I'm just going off of what I remember. So there's that. All right, how much does it weigh? Uh, it's not too heavy, so I don't know the exact weight. I, I don't remember it. I do know it because it's... Uh, in, it's on the website, I believe, in terms of how much it actually weighs, but it's carbon fiber, I believe, in terms of material, so it's less heavy than as if this was all wood, which is really nice for me, because I actually um, have a condition where I'm not supposed to, you know, carry anything heavy, so this is really nice for me. So, snap this, I'm gonna snap this back on, snap this back on, all right, move my hair out of the way, it's a lot of it, <laughs> sorry. All right, and Spirited Away is really nice. Need, I still need to do like one summer's day or uh, name of life, yeah, at some point. Let's see, so if I do, I'm gonna switch back to E flat, it's one of my favorite keys. wrong key, but I could... Okay. Yes, so the LEDs are technically programmable. Um, however, I don't have access to the, um, to the code for them. So if I remember correctly, it's actually Arduino Sketch in combination with Python, which technically I could work with just fine, but I don't have access to the code itself. Uh, so if I go into the color setting here on the screen, once I uh, activate it, just a second, there's different modes. So let's do, what's this one? Okay, there's that. What about this one? Okay, so there's this one that cycles through the different colors. It's called Color Chaser on this one. And uh, I will need to play around to see exactly how I set the colors, but I have like a whole kind of swatch here that I can select different colors for, and it kind of cycle through them. And so let me change to something a little bit less distracting. So, point two, but number six, nightlight. So I like this one if it will play. I think it's on the previous one. Oops. Let's do nightlight. Reader chase. I don't know. There we go. Okay, so I like this one actually. Um, maybe it's not the best for this lighting here, but in person it's pretty nice. It's just a nice uh, kind of low light that could be nice for. Uh, I'm saying nice a lot. Wow. <laughs> that could be great for a uh, bit less festive situations and a bit more calming kind of environments. So this one's a fairly nice one. Let's see. Oh, I guess, yeah, I could practice with, like, one of the lights and, I don't know, tying something with the lights, but, um, yeah, that's something that's beyond me right now, because I don't have access to the code itself. Ooh, the tri shade. This is cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning new things as I go through this. Um, okay, so let me go down. Back to the rainbow, because I like that one. Let's go back to... Okay, this one's nice too, sorry. I feel like maybe I'll need to get a little stylus because the, the touch screen is a little, there we go. Okay, there we go. Wait, 
of this. Okay, here we go, that's good. All right. Ah, so another thing that's just uh, occurred to me, well not just occurred, but I should tune this again. Uh, the, the tuning is actually interesting. So typically on a lever harp um, or a pedal harp, you'd expect the tuning, uh, it's called the, like the pegs at which you use the tuning key to adjust the, the tuning. Um, that would typically be at the top, but for this harp, it's actually at the bottom. So if I uh, take the tuning key, which in this case looks like a little, like a kind of wind up toy turn key. I could actually access the tuner that's built in within this, which is nice, so I can press that and I can play a note and it'll kind of give me like a range and like where the, where the note is. So let's say, sorry, oh right, and it um, disconnects from the amp whenever you do tuning mode, I think. Ooh. Yep. Yep, so I know that this C definitely is a bit sharp. So yeah, this is easier if I take off the, I'm gonna take off the, the shoulder thing real quick. Okay, it's a little bit of harp tuning. All right, so this C is sharp, so I'm gonna go ahead and wind it down just a little bit. Ooh, <laughs> it's still sharp. That's better. Okay. Not perfect, but it'll do for now. Okay. So if I exit tuning mode, it should reconnect to the amp. Yep. Okay. Nah, it's still sharp, but it's better than before. Wait. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Amy, good question. So I currently have a um, Earthquaker Afterneath V3 um, reverb pedal coming in. So I'm not sure if you've seen, but Emily Hopkins has some really awesome electric harp pedal demos. And so um, after listening to her demos and also from recommendations from other friends for their guitars, um, that pedal seemed really awesome. So I have that one coming in. And in terms of other pedals, I'm not quite sure yet. So I definitely have an open mind and I'm going to be doing more research over time as I find space <laughs> for uh, building a pedal bo board, hopefully. Um, and kind of experiment, experimenting more with the electric harp world. Um, let's see. Who or what inspired you to play the harp? Okay. So for me, um, because I didn't start playing until much later, it, it definitely was like self-motivated. So that's nice. That's nice. That sounds open now and actually a little bit. Um, all right, so what inspired me? So. I really just love the sound of the harp. I never really got to see one in person until actually I think <laughs> I was in high school and I remember there was this one time I went to the grocery store and for some reason there was someone playing harp at the end of like the like uh, the checkout area <laughs> um, and I was really kind of like surprised but really happy to like hear a harp. I was like, oh my god, there's a harp here. Um, and I didn't really think much of it after that. I just thought, just thought it was kind of a weird occurrence. But um, I, I started noticing that a lot of songs that I really like had prominent harp in it um, or harp-like parts. So a lot of the music I kind of grew up with, um, including like R&B, but also like video game music, um, you know, had a lot of really nice harp stuff. And so eventually I kind of just came to the realization, wow, yeah, I would love to be able to play this kind of stuff. So um, the Final Fantasy Prelude, so, well, wrong key here, but you can start on, like, you know, that thing that goes up and down, and actually was in the video I just put out um, on the channel, but um, that song, and then Great Fairy Fountain from Zelda uh, was actually a huge <laughs> motivation as well to learn the harp, so those are kind of my major inspirations. Um, let's see, having to tune every string is not that bad, honestly. Um, this is just 30 strings. The the concert grand is 47, I believe. Um, 
but you typically don't have to tune every single string each time, so it's, it's usually fine. Uh, let's see. At what age did I first start playing the harp? I was 21, I think? Yeah, I was 21 when I first started, so it's never too late. Okay. And from Walker. What original songs? What sort of song style do you have interest in making? So there's there's so many song styles out there, so many genres. Um, uh, there's a lot, <laughs> but I think I really want to um, experiment with something that I feel that I can kind of do on my own and not have to rely on others for. So I love collaborating, but I do sometimes want to just be able to you know create something completely on my own and I tend to gravitate more towards a calming style um, and so that doesn't really define anything because anything can be calming but uh, I guess mixing light elements of electronic with the harp and keeping things somewhat atmospheric maybe adding vocals so I am not much of a singer but I have been doing a little bit of like self vocal training lately um, to hopefully start adding a bit more vocal stuff in the future. Okay. Oh, and thank you, Roger. I really put some effort into that Tifa's theme video I put out today. <laughs> okay. So if I do... Let's see. So what if I... I'm curious, what if I turn on the piano? Oh, I unplug it. <laughs> That's fine. I need to get like a um, extension cord. Actually, you know what? You know, I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna lay this down, and I'm going to switch out the corner light with the keyboard, and then use that to create some sustained sounds. So, just a second. Do strings. Oh no, <laughs> not that. Okay, cool. So I could. I do have a pedal, so <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try to um, hold a note on the piano um, using the pedal. So like, and then like play with the harp at the same time. So I'm actually gonna. Um, let's see. Should I have? I'm gonna try to have this on. Alright. Okay, it's snapped on. It's caught on my shirt a little bit. Let me undo that. Okay. Alright, so we have the harp here, piano here, my left foot on the piano pedal. I'm just gonna play a note, let's say, like, just, or a chord, like, E. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Maybe I'll do this some other time, like, I'll just kind of play around with multiple sounds in the meantime. Let me check the chat. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I can do. to like keep my left foot on the piano pedal while keeping this on my right leg <laughs> so usually let me just actually have this yeah there you go not on my leg so we have let's see let's do um
I need to get get used to kind of doing multitasking. This is pretty fun. Um, let's see. Is there such thing as hard for Peter? That would be amazing for loops. Yeah. Um. So looper pedals are. Uh, thanks for reminding me. So looping pedals are on my list. So I don't have any right now. I don't think the amp has one built in, but there is a way that I can kind of trigger um, points to kind of record and loop, and then I can kind of layer on top of myself. And so I don't have one of those yet, but that's something I'm really looking forward to being able to play with. Let's see. Are there any other instruments you'd like to learn in the future? Oh, oh my god. Uh, if I had infinite time, then yes. <laughs> but because my time is so limited, I don't think so realistically. Uh, but it might sound weird, but I really like um, the accord <laughs> accordion. Um, the accordion sounds like a lot of fun to play, um, and if possible, I would like to get back to playing bow string instruments as well. So I used to play viola, uh, but I'd love to play cello one day, uh, but just, I don't have enough time, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Do you have any favorite shows or movies you would want to do the musical score for? Oh man. Uh, what do I love? I feel like I have a major respect for all the people out there who, you know, score entire projects. I don't know if I would have it in me to be able to do that. So I would love to maybe provide a little bit of input or like have a solo or play like for a project, but I don't think I would want to actually kind of um, like do the score for. Um, but in terms of those projects, um, I mean, I guess, of course, Final Fantasy. Uh, I, I love the Bravely Default series, the, the music is great. Uh, what else? There's a lot of stuff out there. Of course, like, Hollow Knight, so like, if Christopher Larkin decided to like, reach out, I'd be really happy. <laughs> um, okay, any tips for playing while your LEDs keep changing colors, F becomes C, etc. Ah, yes, so that's a good question. Luckily, the colors here um, don't change, so even though like the, the color of the harp itself is kind of cycling through, it doesn't really affect how I'm perceiving the string colors, so luckily that's not an issue. Um, however, I do know that recently there's been development of rainbow, or I don't know how recently, I think it might be a little old, but there's been more talk about rainbow colored strings lately, for where like each string is a different color, to help people that have um, issues kind of processing the, um, kind of the spacing between things, so it's like super helpful for them. And also apparently like helps um, people who are new to the instrument learn a lot faster as well, because you can associate a certain pitch with a color. So that's like really awesome. Alright. Let's see, how hard is harp to learn? Interested. Uh so it depends. I would say let's see, so for me, uh picking it up at the beginning wasn't too hard, but then the learning curve kind of like, it got a lot harder, then it kind of like went up and down. So for me, having years of piano experience really helped. I think for most people who have piano experience when they start harp, they're able to kind of excel, accelerate their learning. Um, it's very helpful, but it doesn't help out with some of the key harp essentials. So um, thing like, how you need to use your hands and your fingers, that technique, is really crucial, and that is something you don't get from piano. Um, you do get, you know, like two hands at once, which is really helpful, but just the basic way that you actually play the instrument is a bit tricky, honestly, to get like a good consistent sound. Um, and so that was a little difficult, and then the next key, ma like next major thing is uh, pedals or levers. So for piano, you kind of have everything. 
switch it back. Like you have all the, the notes and like the half steps and everything present at once, but for harp you don't. So for me, I started on the pedal harp, which is what I mainly play. And for that, there's seven foot pedals, um, each with three different positions. And so uh, as you're playing, you may need to switch the pedals with your feet to adjust for accidentals and key changes. So that was a lot to get used to. And it can still be tricky. Um, there's a lot of harp pieces out there that either <laughs> weren't uh, kind of written by someone who knows how to play the harp or doesn't know how to write for harp that required kind of just like really obscene changes. But there's also a lot of really cool harp centric pieces that are definitely written for harp that require a lot of footwork. So that's also like a new thing that makes it difficult to learn. But overall, um, it's not, it's not impossible for sure. Like I would say if you're interested, go for it if you can. Sorry, I feel like I'm just like talking the whole time. <laughs> Hopefully that's okay. Okay, well let me play around with the settings a bit more. Uh, <laughs> let me not do that. Let's switch this over to strings again. We're gonna do choir and end up like a Kingdom Hearts kind of thing. Uh, anyways, okay, so switching over to, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm just going to randomly turn some dials. I'm going to turn this down all the way. Oh, that's just volume. <laughs> Sorry. Oops. <laughs> there we go. I'm just playing around with the dials without looking at what they are. Let's see. Let's see. Have you ever experienced any emotional or mood changes while learning the harp or playing your favorite songs? I, I guess so. Um, so, like with learning any instrument, uh, it can get frustrating at times, but also it can be really rewarding. So, um, even though a lot of my... Um, kind of beginning years of learning was just a lot of like etudes and really specific technique stuff like playing the same thing over and over with like different fingers like and doing that kind of stuff often and doing like finger strength training um, I actually really enjoyed it so I still enjoy it and I feel that when I play the harp if I'm not playing something that's like incredibly difficult that I'm just learning for the first time and like feel frustrated about uh, it's actually fairly soothing. So I have noticed that it was during the most stressful times of my life that I tended to play the harp more to kind of help myself out. Um, so I think it was honestly great <laughs> for my mental health and it was one of the things kind of keeping me hanging on. So I'm, I'm really happy to have, um, have harp. And it's also kind of hard to convey in recordings, but in person, if you're actually playing, you know, the harp, and especially if you're playing a larger one that will, you know, lean against you and you can really feel the, the vibrations, it, it is really soothing. So there's something about playing a regular kind of concert grand pedal harp that will make me feel at ease, which is really nice. Okay. Okay. 
Yay. Sorry to answer, but where'd you get this card? Yes, so Anna, um, this is a Casista electric card. So if you go into the stream description, it should be written out there. Uh, I got this from Phil Casista, who is the manufacturer for, or the maker for this harp. Um, and so if you go to the website, you'll see the different kind of harps available. This is the Clear Tones 30. And this is actually the newest model, uh, which I don't know if the website's updated yet, but I believe this is the first of its kind. Um, so that's what this is. Uh, and no problem. All right, any tips for people currently learning the harp? Uh, yeah, so depending on what kind of harp you're playing, I guess now, regardless of what kind of harp you're playing, uh, one really big universal tip is to seriously um, make sure you're you have good technique. So it, it's not just for the sake of looking pretty or, you know, like focusing and saying like, oh yeah, you know, you have great technique. It really is to help out your body. So you want to make sure that when you're, uh, when you're playing, if you're playing in a more classical style, you may be instructed to bring your fingers all the way in from the kind of your base knuckle. Uh, so instead of doing like a, I don't know if you can see it, <laughs> instead of kind of doing like this kind of motion, you want to do this kind of motion. Uh, really make sure you're doing that to fully relieve tension and not build up anything in your wrist because you don't want to injure yourself over time. Uh, and so there's that. And then also um, one big tip that I learned from a few different harpists actually is doing something that I think we call blocking. So if you're going to learn how to play, let's say something pretty fast, like a lot of chord changes or arpeggios or something like let's say you just have basic but you want to do that over multiple octaves um, one way you might want to approach that is actually playing everything as a chord so playing everything at once sorry i need to get this stable there we go um, so just everything at once be able to um, slowly over time after playing things separately as chords oops sorry lost my place uh, but anyways after playing as chords um, you can slowly start to break things up and the um, the main reason why this is helpful is that your hands get used to the positioning um, for your fingers and for your arms. So let's say you're gonna do like a run that goes, you know, like all the way up and down from the harp. Uh, looking at it one note at a time is not gonna be efficient and you're gonna be likely to miss things. But if you practice as chords, your hands are gonna remember kind of the general position to be in that will allow you to play everything else cleanly. So I would say that's also one of my big tips. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna take a moment just to, I don't know, play around a little bit not be an E flat anymore because I keep doing that. Let's do, uh, I don't know, let's do first get into C and then from there we can adjust. Let's do D major. Minor. Oops, I'm really off. Okay, let me just readjust real quick. <laughs> D minor from E flat major is going to be two flat difference. So let's do E and A, <laughs> I think. Uh, let's see. E, A, it's four. 
guitarist in the game, so we have. So I need to tune that. Okay. But neat. Okay, so cool. So Dragon Roost is doable on this. Yeah, sorry, right now I'm just like really playing around the basics. Oh. <laughs> That's not the heart, by the way, that was the electric keyboard. <laughs> it's not making singing noises. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to do while I'm just playing around for the first time? So, got rainbow mode, seems to be my favorite lighting mode. Oh, right, you can change the LED speed as well. I don't really want to, I kind of like the speed it's at right now. Um, there's also a metronome built into this as well, which is nice, um, but it's like a light based metronome, so it's more for me to kind of like if I look down and see it I can keep track but I think I prefer um, sound or touch based ones okay let's go back to playing with the amplifier settings so <laughs> maybe a bad idea on me just to like blindly change stuff but okay so remember this is amplification or this is gain, this is volume, that's master mix, I don't remember what this is. What is this? Okay. Oh, it's really intense. Wobbly like that. Okay, so let's do. We're gonna do. Okay, so when learning a new song, how long will you practice it before calling your buddy to record? Uh, so that depends on the song. Um, so <laughs> if it's like a short video that I'm just posting on like Twitter or Instagram, it's like uh, 30 seconds or like less than a minute typically. It could be anywhere from like. 15 minutes to like a day maybe <laughs> um but but if it's an actual song that i'm going to be recording with my camera set up and mics and everything and putting on youtube it will take longer so if it's my own arrangement i kind of work on and off on it for uh, i don't know typically it's at least a few weeks on and off uh, because, you know, I have work and everything. I'm not focusing just on harp, but I'll spend like anywhere between like 15 minutes to an hour each time that I look at it 
um, and that can either be me just trying to figure out from memory what the song might sound like, and then playing it on the harp and arranging from there, um, or I could, you know, actually start notating in MuseScore and going back and forth between playing on the harp, notating, and making my arrangement, printing it out, practicing, and all that kind of stuff. So the longest I've ever taken on one was like a year, but uh, that's not, I was actively working, I kind of forgot about it for a while. So for continuous work, the most I've spent is just like a few weeks. Uh, I typically don't arrange anything that's so virtuistic that I can't do it with, or I, I would need to practice for like a major classical piece. So like, um, a uh, major kind of classical or like impressionistic piece that's like a harp solo that I'd learned through like lessons that would take me like months <laughs> to get through just like with learning something new on piano if it's like a really complex piece um, but for my I keep them relatively simple Alice 333. <laughs> I'm glad that you found your way here. Yes, um, this is a new new harp that just came in, so I'm really happy to be playing with it. Gravity Falls and I want to, but the grab the, the theme song is really catchy. Funny that I just like came across that. <laughs> whenever I'm doing a cover for something. Uh, actually, you know, should watch Gravity Falls. We've been planning on watching it eventually. Like, I know Sky's seen it, but I have not, and I know that I would love it, so I probably should watch it sometime soon. It'd be a fun one to, to do on this. I could, like, set it to a kind of more spooky color palette. Walker, yeah, so if, if people are enjoying this, um, I know this is really kind of free form and just answering questions and randomly playing around, not really with any agenda, but if you're enjoying this or like um, you know, more polished heart videos that I put out, uh, feel free to give a like and subscribe and you know, you'll get a notification whenever I do these kind of streams. 
I don't do these too often on YouTube, uh, so if you follow me on Twitter at Harpsono Tweets, uh, you will more likely catch me there doing random streams. But, but yes. Oh, thank you. Alright, so we're back in F now. <laughs> So the strings, I'm actually, you know, yes, they, they do feel consistent. I should ask specifically what the strings are made out of, um, but yeah, definitely not like wire um, strings or anything, or gut. Um, I believe it's probably nylon or also carbon fiber, but the, the harp itself is carbon fiber. Yes. Uh, and Walker, yeah, feel free to recommend the... If you want to cover, uh, uh, if you would like to suggest something, uh, most of the times I actually don't look for sheet music at this point. I actually, most of my arrangements or anything I post is actually just me figuring it out by ear. Um, and then sometimes I'll write down officially my own arrangement. But uh, yeah, I don't need to actually have sheet music for most covers nowadays. <laughs> turning around like that. Ugh. Okay. So I'm still learning of course like how to keep this all on me comfortably and whatnot. Um, I could just take off the, the support right now because uh, mostly have it leaning against me with the piano bench underneath but just be safe. Might as well keep it. question. So the tension is much lower than what I'm used to. Uh, so concert grands definitely have that nice uh, kind of tight strings, whereas this is very loose. Um, it's very gentle, so I need to be careful not to play it like I typically would, or else it's going to sound really like... Oh, that's fine actually right now, but if I... Like, there's a lot more... Um, because it, it's much looser, like, I find it harder to keep track if I try to play fast, um, so it's something I just need to adjust to. Um, if possible, I, I think I would prefer having slightly higher tension, uh, but I, it's actually, I'm getting used to this a lot faster than I thought I would, so hopefully that's helpful. 
Um, yes, um, so because it's electric, yes, that does mean I can use guitar pedals and stuff. So right now, um, I'm running this through an amplifier that has a few kind of preset effects in it, which is why you hear the wobbliness. <laughs> But I do have an effect pedal coming in soon, and I'll be interested in kind of exploring more pedals that I can work with in the future. Let's see. If it's magic, CD Wonder. Oh man, I would probably recognize it if I heard it, but I would need to look up um, how the song sounds like. My parents really love CD Wonder, so I, I definitely hear a lot growing up. Let's see, how long have I been playing? So I've been playing. Oh wait. What year is it? Uh, I think I've been playing for seven and a half years or so now. Um, wow, yeah. <laughs> I think I started posting videos when I had just been playing hard for like two and a half or three years, maybe two years. Um, wow, so yeah, I've been at this for a while. Uh, yeah, so not as long as a lot of other harpists my age probably would have been playing harp. A lot of people start young, uh, but I started when I was 21, so it's, it's been a while. Let's see, let's play A Secret Garden. I'm not sure if I'm familiar. I, I would have to look up A Secret Garden, um, as well as Godspeed, sorry. <laughs> So I mentioned this earlier in my stream as well, but um, one thing that really led, that led me to starting the harp is that I had a free space in my schedule in my last year in college, and I was looking to continue piano lessons, but I looked at the music department, I saw harp lessons, and I immediately decided to sign up, so that's how I started. Yes, I can play many things for Zelda, but I need to figure out what I can play on this harp. <laughs> so I'm so used to playing with pedals um, that I changed my feet rather than with levers that I need to figure out what the limitations or what I can play within the limitations of levers. So what do I typically play and what it, what key is that typically in? Oh, okay. So we do. Give me a second. I gotta set the levers. So it's a little rough, but I need to get used to kind of changing levers as needed. There's a little bit of serenade of water from Ocarina of Time. 
can see. It's been wonderful seeing your development. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel like I've definitely learned a lot over the years, and it's kind of fun revisiting some of my older stuff and being like, oh, yeah, it's not that bad um, in terms of how to like you know, play it. And then I kind of go back and listen, like, oh, man, I really should redo that. <laughs> like, kind of hear all the mistakes. Um, yes, my original. Thank you so much for listening, by the way, to my original. Um, I would need to set it in... Fuck you guys again. I set, I set it in an interesting kind of pentatonic scale um, with the pedal harp, and I feel like I might be able to transpose it. Um, but at this point, I would need to kind of spend some time going back and forth, so... I will not do that right now, but I definitely encourage you to check it out, everyone else that's listening right now. Uh, thank you so much, Paula, for bringing it up. Alright. Um... And yes, more harp music. Harp is good. Um, how did that Kingdom Hearts collaboration cover come about? The arrangement and editing were both a beautiful sight to behold as much of joy for the years. Oh, thank you. So, um, let's see. So I wrote the arrangement for harp and cello. So if you haven't heard it yet, anyone else in the stream, please do check it out. It's for Dearly Beloved from Kingdom Hearts. Uh, cello and harp are one of my favorite instruments. So I did a short video before just on the harp for um, Dearly Beloved, which I don't know what key is. Oh, that's not it. Uh, I can figure it out, but. Um, and so from that, I decided, hey, I actually want to, you know, expand upon it. And I would really love to bring some kind of sustaining notes into it in addition to the harp. And so I, I really just, you know, thought cello would be great with it. And I reached out to Andrew Dunn, or Israfel Cello, um, who I've seen kind of around the video game music community, and really nice person. And so I reached out to him, and you know he was excited to record for me, because I actually recorded something for him for a full amount of Alchemist cover. And um, I sent over my arrangement. He just added a few um, kind of overarching harmonies for the cello, which I really appreciated and really helped bring it out. Uh, but other than that, like, yeah, it was, mostly just written by me and we decided to collaborate uh shared you know recording and mixing of course it was done remotely uh and then we recorded the video separately i put it together and posted it so to date um that's still i think my favorite collaboration that i've done and my favorite arrangement that i've written myself um it I, i'm really happy with how it turned out so definitely please do give it a listen if you if you haven't heard it before um can we see you play piano? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, let me take this down real quick. I'm gonna lower all the levers, just out of good habit. I'm gonna detach the, the uh, whatever you call this, stethoscope type hook thing. I'm gonna put the harp down, just briefly. I mean, I don't have anything prepared on piano. It's been a long time since I've played, like seriously, but song that I played was Beethoven's um, Pathetique, so like Sonata number eight, I believe, in C minor. Um, the one that has three movements, and I think the second and third ones are probably more well known, but like I remember the first one having that fun like... Uh... <laughs> That's been a while, sorry. <laughs> to practice to be able to do the stuff I used to be able to do, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's the piano. Um, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So, ah, thank you. Yeah, I, sh I should definitely do more Zelda videos. <laughs> I, I would like to. Um, let's see. How'd you learn to play harp? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, so 
luckily taking lessons through school and that's been super great and then afterwards just a lot of self-teaching <laughs> but I'm for the strung out comment uh yeah so balancing this my phd was a lot but if anything playing harp helped me get through my phd um otherwise i probably would have been so like like i was already incredibly stressed but i wouldn't have had as much of a focused outlook or out outlet um so i think it really helped me honestly um i just like the years are blurred out <laughs> because i just kind of had to work my way through it so hard but um, I somehow did it. <laughs> yep. Okay. So I might probably end the stream soon because it's getting a little late and I should probably, I don't know, just relax for a little bit and have fun looking up more, <laughs> more pedals. Um, but the, the pedal that I'm interested in getting or have ordered already is uh, delayed because there's actually a lot of snow here, which is rare because it, it rarely snows in Seattle. So um, it was supposed to come in today, but it's expected to have been delayed until next Tuesday, I think. Um, so probably sometime next week I'll play around with um, with the Afterneath V3. And actually see a big comment just came up. Yes, I do know of Dorothy Ashby. Yes, yes, yes. And when I saw her go on. Awesome. Yes, yeah, yeah. So definitely an inspiration. Um, I want to be able to play more of like a jazz harp style eventually. It's <laughs> incredibly difficult. I, I have the utmost respect for jazz harpists. Um, I, I would love to be able to play more in kind of the style of like the original greats and also kind of develop my own style or like apply that to my arrangements. Um, so yes, Dorothy Ashby for sure. Um, my PhD was in bioengineering. so. I uh, traditionally come from a biomedical engineering background, so my, my PhD was specifically on, uh, how do I just describe this? So on um, improving the longevity and the function of brain-computer interfaces, so systems that interface with your brain, uh, specifically for individuals who are paralyzed or may need to use these systems. So uh, specifically addressing this through having adaptation or co-adaptation between the, the, the um, the user and the machine itself. So a lot of research about signals regarding our own performance and how we monitor our mistakes, um, attention, and then having um, kind of this this feedback loop to help improve the performance automatically. So that was my PhD. Um, so yeah, I play cello and piano and lever harp is so much harder. Oh, it's awesome to hear, Paula. I, I know that self-teaching is definitely can be difficult, um, but I'm glad that you know any tips that I have could be useful, um, or you know definitely other harpists out there like Josh Lane, which I'm sure you've probably heard of, um, have great videos out there going over technique and other things that can help you with self-teaching. See, other good jazz harpists, yes. Uh, snap. There, there's another name of like a classic, like someone who's definitely from the, around the same era. Can't remember right now for some reason, but right now Brandy Younger, so B R A N D E E Younger, um, is a big name. Also Tara Minton, so T A R A M I N T O N, are also great harpists as well. So I would check them out if you're interested in kind of um, jazz and contemporary harp. Let's see. Yes, so normal harp and electric harp. So just like with a guitar, um, typically uh, a normal or acoustic um, version of the instrument, uh, you know, it, it's built so that the sound kind of really goes out. An electric harp in this case is similar to an acoustic harp where I can definitely still hear some sound if I play it without an amplifier. Um, right now it's hooked up to an amp. But the major thing is that there's a microphone or pickups kind of built in to the instrument itself so typically the string tension is a bit different and the recording you can kind of hook a uh, you can plug in the instrument directly into an amplifier or audio interface and that will send the sound signals back and then be you know amplified or affected um, so the major difference is that this doesn't need to be made out of wood and there doesn't need to be a soundboard um, so for the physics of like a harp there's typically a soundboard which the, the sound can kind of like pop off of but that's not necessary for an electric harp, so it's a bit thinner on this side. Okay, all right. 
Okay, um, so if anyone has any kind of last minute questions, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and end stream in a moment. So I'll give the chat um, a few minutes because I know there's also a delay, or a few moments there's a delay. So yeah. show or something to finish. Okay. All right. I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and call it a stream. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and set this down lightly, tear, turn off the stream, and then take care of everything else I need to take care of that I was procrastinating. So, all right. Okay. Thank you so much.